Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Nina and in this video I'm going to talk about how I put in my own outdoor arena on a budget. my own four and a half acre farm in western Washington and uh, with that I've learned a lot of things about horse keeping and uh, keeping them at your own home is a lot more work than a lot of people realize but one of those things that you kind of tend to forfeit when you bring your horses home is a good place to ride and here in western Washington it rains a lot in the winter time even now it's August and we have a little bit of an overcast day we had a little bit of rain yesterday which of course was great for the garden but um, that being said, a lot of places, full care places that allow you to board your horse at, that a lot of us have gotten accustomed to, have really nice covered arenas. Um, however, there are obviously some places like my own here backyard uh, that are just outdoor arenas. And so, so one of the things when I bought my own place, I knew it had to have the ability to put in an arena. I knew I probably wouldn't be able to afford a place that already had an arena outdoor. Um, but that I needed a, pl a property that would accommodate that. So when I looked at this particular property, there was only two places that I even thought could fit an outdoor arena of some sort of size. Um, and this ended up being the site chosen primarily because of its size. Uh, my arena is 80 by 140 feet, which is just barely larger than um, a dressage court, not a full size, uh, but a smaller dressage court. And something fairly rectangular um, in shape was really important to me so that you could ease, more easily work on circles and lead changes and do the reining and things like that in it as well. Um, but also in choosing the site, it needed to be a location that got um, a good amount of sunlight. This side of my arena is all trees. Um, but you can see it's it's pretty open here. So it needed to have a good amount of sunlight for drying purposes. The other really important thing was being able to put it on a um, on a slight degree angle to allow it to shed water. Because uh, one of the things that we'll we'll talk about is um, the importance of your base and the ability for it to shed and not uh, necessarily drain through. So some people think that they need to have a arena base that will allow the water to settle to drain, but really that's not conducive to a good base of an arena. You want it to shed. Uh, sometimes you'll put in French drains or curtain drains or things like that, um, or you can also employ uh, putting a crown or like I did here, an angle. Um, there's actually two planes of an angle that help it shed away to the natural low spots of the property. So once you pick out a good site, uh, the next thing is actually going to be doing your arena and all of that. And, and your property is going to determine how much work that entails. My property was all trees over here. So as you can see, it's pretty dense trees. This actually, this project took um, about four years because this is the final, this is the fourth year that I can say my arena is done because it actually has a fence up now. Um, but Choosing your site, uh, don't be too intimidated by trees, just know it is going to take a little bit of additional work. Um, but uh, once you have your site chosen, then you'll actually go through the procedure of um, putting your arena in. So for me, that looked like in order to uh, save cost, I wasn't able, I knew I wasn't able to afford clearing it all and taking all the stumps out and doing all the dirt work and bringing in the footing all in one shot. And honestly, that's not actually a really good method because the ground needs time to acclimate and settle to all the change that you've done to it. So what I did in the first year was just take the trees down. And then uh, I, the following year I saved up more money and then had the stumps removed. And then the following year I saved up more money and had someone come in and um, actually put the grade in and that's where he added in the, the slight slope. So my arena actually slopes back this way a little bit and then down that way. So it's very slight. I think it, they, I think he said it was one degree or two degrees or something like that. So you don't feel the slope when you're riding in here, but there's enough of a slope and in the winter time you can see where the water is trying to move to is back this way and down that way. 
So understanding um, the slope and how you, where you want your water to shut off to is really important. So that was the third year was having someone actually come and do the groundwork because there were stumps in here. So it took a lot of moving of material uh, to get it in a, in a, in a nice flat um, uh, condition. And, um, and then the final year was uh, actually bringing some footing in. So that's how I was able to, um, to, to get my outdoor arena put in cost effectively. And we can talk about the fence too. Um, and it was just merely doing it in stages. All in all, this arena cost about $10,000 from start to finish. And we did a lot of the work that we could ourselves. Um, however, there, we did need to have some professionals come in with some bigger equipment than our Kubota um, to get it done. So we'll go ahead and roll into some um, of the photos and the process of how um, we did it piece by piece. And you can, you can see how that all came about. So in these couple of photos, you can see um, the trees were here. This was right after I had the trees removed. I just didn't have a photo of that. So there, there was quite a few trees, quite a few large ones. We had someone take the trees down and haul them away. And then we had to take care of the brush, um, either burning it or making it into wood chips. And then we had all of these stumps left over. And that's how it was the first year. The second year I had a gentleman come out with big equipment to take out the stumps. Um, he took out the stumps and then he worked up all of the stump pieces and everything into these huge piles. Um, and this particular process was about $2,500 and it took, I believe, about three days. So we had all of the stumps removed. Um, as you can see, all these big brush piles and we needed to get rid of them. So we actually had to have a big truck come and um, it took five loads from this huge truck that you'll see um, to actually get rid of all of it. So the ground stayed like this for a solid year. Um, the purpose for that was to actually allow the ground some time to settle and um, actually harden up a little bit on its own, which it did really well. So it stayed like this for a solid year and this is where that patience comes in. I did ride on it just a tiny bit, but it is a sandy loam and so it's a little bit slippery and really the whole point of this was for the ground to be able to solidify and not have horses on it. So the following spring I had my contractor come back out to do the final grade and at that time I actually decided to take a couple more trees out and expand it by another, I think it was 15 feet or so. Uh, which I'm really happy that I did. So he did this final grade where you can see, like I talked earlier about the way that it slopes so it sheds the water. And uh, there was some more dirt and things to move around at this point. And then after the final grade, we let it sit again for a while um, to let it finish hardening up. So uh, at this point, it was a good opportunity to put in my fence posts before I had sand in the way. So I installed the fence, almost all the fence posts um, at this time, and then it sat uh, for another maybe a year or so. Uh, and you'll notice in these photos that I didn't actually have any base itself come in because allowing the ground to solidify for two years really made it quite rock hard. Um, and that might not always work in whatever region that you're in, but for my region, it actually worked out really well and it allowed this to get really hard. In fact, the contractor didn't think that it would be beneficial to even bring a compactor in because it did the it naturally did such a good job on its own giving it that time. To... So finally the fun part came and that was actually getting the sand. I believe it took 10 loads and I think each 10 each load was 10 yards, I believe, 10 or 12 yards. But finally we brought the sand in and we have our own Kubota, so I was able to spread it on my own which took Oh my gosh. I mean, you can spread it out fairly quickly, um, but then getting it perfect has been a labor of love for the last year or so. It's constantly, um, you're always finding little spots to be adjusting. We only actually put um, sand on two thirds of the arena because of that expanded area that I had him extended at. I wanted that to have some more time to cure as well. So for that first winter, I only used two thirds of it. And this is how it looks now. The sand's been brought all the way over to the edge and I get to utilize the entire arena and I'm so thrilled that I had the patience 
um, to do this year by year project because in the end now I have an 80 by 140 arena in my backyard. So what's the takeaway from this? All of that to tell you that you can put in your own outdoor arena on a budget. Uh, all you really need is some patience and the ability to save up some money year by year. This might have taken me four years to get this all put together, um, but at the end of the day, I didn't have to take out any big loan for it. I was I didn't go into debt. I, it wasn't that huge of a headache, and it actually allowed the ground the time that it needed to... Um, to settle and, and be the best base that it could be. Now, are there other ways that we could have done this? More than likely. And there are, um, I'm sure, different regions that have different requirements for their outdoor are arenas. But for my particular uh, circumstances, this is what worked out the best. So, <laughs> do your arena in stages. Have a good plan from the start. Pick a really, really good site for um, your needs, for however big you can make it. Um, go a little bit bigger if you can. It will cost you a little bit more uh, total in your footing and all of the expenses um, with your contractor, uh, groundwork or anything like that. But at the end of the day, you always wish that you had a little bit more. It's kind of like putting in an extra stall in your barn, right? So don't be afraid to take some time, save up your money to be able to do it, and be patient. It will end up happening. Promise you, it will. It happened for me and it can happen for you. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, put that in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you like the content of my videos, be it gardening, horses, competition, farm life, and I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next video.